Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sendine and Central webinar. Um, my name is Elaine Kennedy, and I am Vice President of Global Representation Services here at Sendine. I'm joined today by Andy Herman, who's our Director of Corporate Sales at Sendine, and Lauren Predmore, who is Director of National Accounts at Central. So the topic today on the webinar is how to boost your hotel's corporate client acquisition strategy and win more RFPs. So I'd like to um, have Andy and Lauren introduce themselves and share a bit of information about how they work with corporations. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Elaine. And thank you, everyone, for joining today's webinar. We're, we're very excited to have you. So as Elaine mentioned, my name is Andy Herman. Um, I am looking after all of the uh, the the uh, the corporate accounts that are sourced out of the United States and, and Canada. Uh, so uh, several uh, several accounts I am looking after, and uh, and I, one of one of the uh, one of the the hoteliers that I work with is Lauren. So Lauren, if you can say hello. Hi everyone, Elaine, Andy. Thank you for including me in the webinar. I'm really excited to be here. My name is Lauren Predmore. I'm the director of national accounts on the corporate sales team at Central. I helped oversee our hotel division. I was recruited to build our preferred corporate account portfolio and, and grow our transient uh, guest offerings, if you will. Excellent, thank you both. So diving into the content for today's session, we're gonna look first of all at the business travel growth and, and some trends related to that. And then we're gonna get into the, the key elements that really drive a successful corporate acquisition strategy. Um, Andy's going to share with you um, how Sendine Corporate Sales operates in terms of working to acquire um, new corporate business and um, give some tips and trends related to the unsolicited bid process. And then Lauren's going to take us through Central's success story um, working with corporate sales and how they've been growing that um, lucrative business on, on the corporate sales side. At the end, we hope to have time for some Q&A, so please do post any questions that you have in the chat, and we'll, we'll answer those at the end of this session. So let's look at business travel growth. So um, GBTA's most recent um, index outlook report shared that, you know, by end of 2024, it really is a $1.4 trillion business, and they see that rising over the next three years to $1.8 trillion, which is just literally under 30% growth. So that's a huge um, growing industry that, you know, we, we really feel that there's lots of opportunity to tap into today. When we also look then at GDS, which is the main key electronic channel for driving corporate business to a property. Um, Amadeus recently surveyed a thousand of their travel agents that are using their platform. And you know what they're seeing is that 50% of those agents actually said they're using the GDS channel as their top channel more so today than than three years ago. So, you know, that again falls into, you know, showing how how great this 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 um, channel of business is for on the corporate side for growth. Before we move into the key elements, um, you know, and looking at a corporate booking strategy, I'd just like to ask Lauren, um, are you seeing GDS growing at Central as well? And and how did you start? Why did you start working with GDS? Um, sure. Yes. Uh, through the GDS, Central has certainly seen an uptick in travel agency interest and exposure to travel agencies and to corporate um, bookers as well, who never would have had access to our brand prior without having that GDS presence. Um, recently, I started working with an agency out of Spain who represents their travelers from Europe coming to their Miami headquarters. They book via GDS and without having like loaded rates, they never would have had access to our property, but also our brand because then they found that they had business in other cities as well um, to expand their reach. So it helped us to expand our reach to a portion of the company outside of the United States, um, which was really exciting for us. That's fantastic, Lauren. Great to hear. So let's look at the, the key elements um, for a successful strategy. Really, with, with GDS, that is the, the, the main channel connecting supply and demand between the hotel loading their inventory and rates and you know sharing all of their um, opportunities that you know the different type of programs that they want to go into, loading that in the GDS. And then that then follows through across, of course, to the, the travel agents and the huge community of bookers on the other side of the GDS channel. 
Um, as Lauren says there, it really opens up opportunity to reach a huge audience of, of bookers and travel agencies that you you, ne you wouldn't, you know, even by trying to do a sales calls as many as you could, you, you would never reach them all. And um, it's a great way to drive business, um, especially in a quick manner, as well as acquiring corporate longer tail corporate accounts as well. When we look at, first of all, the, I guess, the foundations of working and acquiring corporate business, one of the key things that, that really um, stands out to me that is something that you really need to really take an important um, emphasis on, especially once a year coming into RFP season, is the CVENT Transient RFP Tool Profile. Um, if you're particip if you're not participating in this in this platform, you know it's definitely something to look into. Majority of corporations are um, looking and sourcing hotels through the RFP platform, and and in there um, there's a, a profile section, and that's really where they want all properties to to put in and complete those section of questions. Now it does take quite a long time, but it's a one time you know to get it set up initially. And then once you've done that, it's about refreshing it. So, you know, adding in your, your, I've shared some tips here on the key areas that, you know, you need to focus on, I think, in terms of making sure the right contacts in there in order to, to receive the RFP. But things like geocoding is so important. You know, if a corporation has suddenly halfway through the year opening a new office and it's in your area and you know, you you haven't entered your geocodes, then you won't come up on the search when they're looking to source um, properties through the RFP platform. So this is this is really um, a key thing to do and, and focus on. And it, it really does set the foundations then for acquiring corporate RFPs and growing your corporate business. Let's look at the demand um, channels that are really driving growth um, for corporate business. So a lot of the business that comes through the GDS channel today for corporate is really coming through the top TMC. So the likes of the mega agents like American Express, BCD Travel, CWT. And then, you know, when you look at what's the breakdown of their business, the majority of them have about half of their business is from large corporate accounts that they're working on and transacting for. And then you have the other side of the business, which is lots and lots of individual corporates who don't necessarily have their own program, but come to a TMC to be part of their um, hotel program. And that's where, you know, the connection there from a property side, you can really then take advantage of that business and um, join some of the, the TMC programs. On the other side, consortia as well are a great source of, of business, especially for the next tier down of agencies. Um, and sometimes depending on your location and your city and your style of property, a consortia may drive more business than a TMC can. So it's really depending on, you know, making sure you do your homework and looking at which of the which of those accounts within both TMC and consortia would be the best fit for your property. I'm going to come back to Lauren here because I know at the start when 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 Central and Lauren started to work with us, we we spent quite a lot of time together, Lauren, didn't we? Looking at at this segment and looking at the ROI that you could achieve from both TMC and consortia accounts. Um, can you just give an overview here of you know what you feel you've developed from participating in TMC and consortia business? Sure. Yeah. At Central, we did our homework, that's for sure, to de determine who best to partner with um, in the TMC and consortia space. Um, but every day we're learning something new about our different markets, et cetera. And Sendine um, really helped to determine who to start with and who can help guide and, and help to guide that decision based on our needs and strategy for each specific property. We have properties all throughout the United States and in different cities. So we looked at it and said, what do you want to achieve? what do you want from um, joining the program and how to optimize the partnership? The most important part isn't to just sign up. How are we going to optimize the partnership? Um, and the strategy was less is more. We're not going to sign up for every single, you know, partnership out there, every single consortium. Because um, for independent brands like Central, it can be tricky to appear on the GDS and 
being a part of Sendine allowed an independent brand like ours to have a presence, be easily found, and it opened doors to preferred partnerships and corporate negotiations that we wouldn't have had before. Excellent. Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly it. And I'm sharing a list here, and we will share this deck out with everyone, but it, it really highlights, you know, what are those top programs? Um, and then, you know, they all come through the, the RFP platform. So they provide, the, the TMCs and consortia do a lot of work up front to provide information about their destinations that they booked. Also, if you're a luxury property or, or a niche style property and looking for a certain type of business, then, you know, it's there are certain programs as well that will be a better fit for, for the property. I think as well, once you're in the program, the key things to make sure from the very start of the year is really to ensure that your rates are viewable and bookable um, from the agency side. And then also that, you know, whatever you have included into your rate offering, make sure that you've got a strong rate description on the GDS as well. So if you don't, if you aren't responsible for doing that yourself, um, make sure that you're working internally with the teams that, that do that work on the system and um, are adding your all your inclusions in there to give you a best chance of, of getting bookings. I'm going to now hand over to Andy to talk about the what we're doing at Sendine on the global corporate sales side and how we work with properties to, to um, help grow that corporate business. Great. Th thank you, Elaine. Uh, so as Elaine said, I'm going to talk to you about Sendine's global corporate sales team. I'm going to offer some tips on how to achieve the best ROI when working with global corporate hotel programs, as well as provide some insights into converting uh, those unsolicited bids into RFPs. So our global corporate sales team consists of myself, as mentioned earlier, who's based in Minneapolis. And then we also have Jay, Julie, and Claudia, who are all based in London, uh, that are supporting the team. Uh, as mentioned, I manage the relationships with the corporate accounts sourcing out of both uh, the United States and, and Canada. So the Sendine Global Corporate Sales Team supports our managed portfolio of properties by, by really being an extension to their own sales team. Uh, our corporate sales team ensures our managed hotels receive the marketing support of a big brand uh, while remaining uniquely independent. Uh, that way our managed properties do not have to sacrifice the individuality to benefit from the resources and network of a larger organization. Uh, this means our portfolio of properties can continue to offer the unique experiences that really set them apart uh, from other properties while we provide the tools and support to help them grow their GDS business. Management companies like Sendine leverage the strong relationships that we have with the global corporations to secure exclusive invite-only corporate business opportunities. Uh, it's a huge advantage as it opens the doors to high-value clients that hotels might not be able to access on their own uh, by being part of a portfolio, properties are positioned to receive invitations to bid on corporate contracts that can really significantly boost their business. So our team is dedicated to keeping our brands top of mind with the most relevant key corporate program decision makers and influencers. Uh, we really understand the importance of that visibility in the corporate world, and we work to ensure that the brands are noticed by, by those who matter. Uh, we do this by attending industry events, as well as through educational webinars, white papers, and consultant updates. Uh, just last week, actually, Laura and I attended GBTA and held some joint meetings with, with corporate buyers. When it comes to winning contracts, we help ensure RFP submissions meet corporate requirements through the bidding process. Uh, this can be a complex and competitive area, so our team can provide that insight and strategies to make the proposal stand out, really increasing the chances of acceptance. And then finally, being part of a portfolio gives properties access to global chainwide agreements. Uh, this means hotels can benefit from agreements negotiated on a, a global scale and provide properties with opportunities that otherwise could be out of reach. Uh, with most corporates uh, nowadays, you know, we're seeing that they're reducing their hotel programs and a lot of requiring at least 100 book nights before sending an RFP. So the chainwide agreements really allows the properties to display in the corporate booking tools, uh, achieve those bookings, and, and hopefully in the future, you know, receive uh, that minimum threshold in order to, to receive an RFP. So global corporate hotel programs, you know, I think a lot of you, uh, most of you probably know what they are, uh, but they're a strategic in initiative undertaken by uh, a company to manage its accommodations on a global scale. Uh, the program typically involves negotiating contracts with hotel chains, as well as at specific properties to secure preferred rates, 
value added amenities, uh, preferential terms and conditions. And in most cases, this is this is done and sourced by a, by a global travel manager. And in a lot of cases, that's also uh, they also have the support of a, of a TMC consultant. So um, jumping into an ROI, the ROI. So so based on our experience and expertise, there are several ways you can achieve a higher ROI with global corporate hotel programs. And I just kind of want to walk through them with you. Uh, the number one thing is working closely with your global or national account manager. Uh, Lauren and I uh, meet frequently to discuss Central's corporate goals, their strategies, and target accounts. Uh, in some cases, uh, corporate accounts will only work through national account managers as they really just don't have the time to meet with every individual property. So working closely with your with your NAM or global account manager is very important. Uh, pay close attention to the client's requirements as well as their terms and conditions. We're seeing more and more uh, corporations reject the first bid from hotels if they do not meet the requirements. So really take the time to, to read through that bid packet, read through the invite letter in terms and conditions. Uh, and again, working closely with your NAM can help ensure that, that your bid's submitted correctly. This is very important. Uh, another one, know your local market and competitors. This is extremely important when trying to win business from the competition. Most clients are not going to move away from an existing hotel partner unless you know they think they're going to see some significant savings. Uh, we are seeing a lot of corporate accounts with, with over 80% of their hotel program being incumbent properties. So when you're a challenger, a, a strong rate uh, is, is going to be key and, uh, and you know offering something better than, than your competitors are offering. Another big one that, you know, I think a lot of hotels uh, have kind of fallen away from is, is submitting your best bid first. Don't assume that the client will submit renegotiations. Uh, we're seeing more examples of corporate accounts accepting the initial bid if it's a competitive bid. Um, and in a lot of cases, in some cases, you may not get another chance, right? So, so make sure your first proposal counts. Um, another big one too, if proposing a rate increase, ensure the increase is aligned with market conditions. Uh, this is something that the travel managers will be watching. So if the market is increasing by two or 3% uh, and you submit a 12% increase, you're definitely gonna be at risk of being rejected and uh, you may not get that renegotiation. Um, another big one, respond to RFPs and negotiations timely. Uh, don't wait until the last minute or ask for an extension. We're hearing more corporates saying that they, they will not be giving extensions. So uh, when you see the bid come in, I try to get it filled out as soon as possible. Most corporates allow in between you know two, three weeks uh, to, to turn the bids around. So just you know please try not to wait until the last minute. Big one too is preloading rates that are offered in the first round. This really helps ensure that travelers that are booking in advance are gonna have access to, to those preferred rates ahead of time. Uh, and then once accepted, ensure that the final offer is loaded correctly. Because most corporate accounts, they, they will be running GDS audits. And if your hotel fails the audit, uh, corporate accounts may remove you from the program. We've, we've seen that happen uh, recently as well. Big one too, uh, honor the agreed upon rate. Everyone during the RFP season worked hard uh, to create these partnerships and, and they, the corporates really expect it to be partnerships. So uh, again, corporate accounts will remove hotels that do not honor their commitments. Um, a big one uh, as well is ensuring the rate descriptions are accurate and attention grabbing. Uh, this can really help when travelers are searching their OBT for accommodations. Uh, you really want to stand out from the rest of the preferred properties as well as the, the, the chain and consortia rates that are showing up in the OBT. So uh, strong descriptions are good. And again, you can work with your NAM uh, to make sure that, that those are updated. And then uh, take advantage of chainwide opportunities if you have the if you have the chance. Uh, this is your this is an opportunity to really be bookable to corporate accounts with hopes of increasing the booking so that you'll receive a formal RFP in the future. So next, I want to jump into unsolicited bids, uh, often referred to as volunteer bids, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, but they're proposals submitted by hotels to potential corporate clients without a formal request. So these bids aim to introduce hotels to clients who might not have considered them otherwise, offering competitive rates and unique benefits to attract the business. So our team recently finalized a white paper that explored unsolicited bids and the best practices when submitting in order to increase your chances of, of them being converted into RFPs. So the good news uh, while we were working on this white paper is we found out that most organizations do accept unsolicited bids, uh, though the extent and manner of how they review them can vary greatly. Some organizations have a formal process for all hotels 
um, where others uh, review bids selectively based on the needs and potential value. We did find that most buyers use their own templates. So this is really important uh, if you are submitting an unsolicited bid to use that template and fill it out completely. Because keep in mind, all other unsolicited bids are going to be coming in on that same template. Uh, so if yours stands out and it's filled out completely, uh, you're going to have better chances of converting that. Um, one of the most critical factors that makes an unsolicited bid stand out over another is, is really the competitiveness of the rates and the clarity of the offer. A well-defined business case that includes competitive rates up front and justifies the proposal is really essential to being considered. Most of the buyers that we talk to uh, do prefer static rates over dynamic. Uh, so if you can, uh, static rates are, are definitely gonna get, uh, uh, get looked at closer than, than dynamic. Another big one, uh, and you, most of you probably know this, but it is really important, the distance of the hotel to the client's local office or, or key locations is a significant factor uh, when they're looking at unsolicited bids. Bids that provide specific details on the proximity and any established local relationships or testimonials can really gain an edge. Bids that stand out typically avoid generic information and focus on the unique benefits and specific client needs. So really tailoring uh, the proposal to address the client's business case, such as new office openings or specific project needs is, is crucial. Um, we do see some hotels kind of submit the same unsolicited bid business case for, for every client, and it really needs to be a bespoke offer. So really do your research uh, in order to get those converted. So a strong business case that clearly explains why the hotel should be added and really what value it brings to the client is fundamental. Uh, this includes specific benefits such as added amenities, uh, transportation options, and any other unique offerings that the hotel uh, can, can offer. Many organizations, as mentioned earlier, have a room night threshold. Uh, typically it's around 100 nights before they'll send an RFP. However, this threshold can vary depending on the client and destination. Some of the big exceptions to the room night threshold uh, include newly opened or renovated properties, as well as new office locations and any specific project needs. So really understanding these exceptions and leveraging them in the bid can increase the chances of acceptance. I think one thing that hotels need to keep in mind is that in many cases, the hotel will see new travel patterns before the travel manager actually does. So bringing this to their attention really highlights your strong partnership with that corporation. Um, hotels should really focus on true opportunities and avoid submitting too many unsolicited bids as excessive submissions can really dilute the impact of unsolicited bids. And then lastly, when submitting unsolicited bids strategically and not too far in advance of the RFP release, ensure that the pro proposal is considered at the right time. So really understanding uh, the client sourcing cycle and submitting those bids accordingly can, can really improve the, the effectiveness. And Lauren, I, I know we've collaborated on corporate RFPs, unsolicited bids, as well as chain agreements. How have some of these best practices helped you and Lead Central to success? Sure. Um, well, first of all, um, Central only came into existence three, four years ago, and we own and operate and manage our properties, um, and we've been growing exp at an exponential rate. We have 10 properties in the United States now that accept one plus night stays um, and that are will be on the GDS. Um, Central is a new brand with a new, unique offering. Our communities offer designer furnished apartment suites where you can stay a night or longer. We've offered transient bookings as well as extended stay. Um, so it's a very unique kind of different um, idea that's being offered on, on the GDS. We have spacious turnkey apartments, co-working spaces and premier amenities and destination cities nationwide. Um, so the so Central partnered with Sendine um, to increase brand awareness because we have a lot to offer, but we need to increase our, our brand awareness among travel buyers, bookers and decision makers. Through our partnership, we've been able to secure chainwide agreements um, specific corporate RFPs and have had conversations with decision makers who otherwise may not have had the, um, the time or the bandwidth to speak to an independent property. Um, I've taken the time to build our business cases, target accounts, and strategy for each market. And then I meet with Andy to discuss action items and keep us top of mind when presenting for chainwide and preferred corporate RFPs. Sendine's um, sales team is, is like an extension of Central. Um, so they've helped us to achieve success, success through there being an extension of, of our sales team. Um, they know and, and have experienced the product, which is really helpful. And Andy has opened doors to decision makers who typically 
would only meet with, say, a GSO or a major hotel brand, which is really helpful to a small fish in a, in a big pond. So we've come to the end of Lauren's section. Um, and now I wanted to open up the Q&A section. So Andy, could you have a look at the questions in the chat? I see some questions in there. Yeah, yeah, Elaine. Uh, there are a few questions that have come in. Uh, the first one is, uh, what what are the top producing consortia? And maybe that's one that you can answer, Elaine. Sure. So you know, there's there's the largest producing. So obviously, the well, the TMCs are really the largest. So they have the biggest share. Um, but then, you know, what I said earlier is really look at your what do you want to achieve from your corporate strategy? You know, is there a consortia out there that could maybe drive more in terms of the type of business that you are are looking for? So it's not always looking at the biggest one that have the biggest biggest number of room nights to deliver to your destination, but it's more about looking at matching your strategy and matching the program to your strategy and also looking at the type of clients that they have. You know, how much of their business is, on large corporate invite only clients versus transient, you know, how much can they do for you? How much can they move straight away? So I think that's, it, it's really about doing your, doing the research and looking at each program and don't always think about going for the biggest one because it may not be the best fit for, for your property. Okay, great. Thank you, Elaine. And, and here's another one. And, and maybe, Elaine, you could start off and, and I can I can jump in as well and add some comments. Um, how often does Sendine sales meet with hoteliers? Great question. So, you know, it, when we work together with, with hoteliers, we look at, um, you know, okay, what's the structure? You know, is there a central team? Is there a team then that we're going to be working with at individual property level as well? And then we start to look at, okay, how how often, what's the strategy? What's the goals here? What do you want to achieve from growing your corporate business segment and, and see where we fit into that and see how we can help them? We look at the quick wins in that. And then we meet as often and as regular with our hoteliers as 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 they want to, to do that. So um, it can be where there's um, quarterly QBRs. It can be where there's also then um, monthly calls, for instance. So I would say with most most customers, it's it's really on a monthly basis. When we get to, you know, right now, as we're in the thick of the RFP season, it can be a lot more regular than that. And and I know Lauren would 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 agree with this. You know, we're conversing nearly every other day <laughs> about opportunities. You know, as opportunities come up and as um you know trips come up and and um events as well. You know we're we're constantly engaging, and the, and you know what I would say here is the more engagement you have, the more success you have together because we get to know your brand better, and also we get you know we're totally always keeping top of mind um with 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 everybody in terms of the strategy. Yeah, thanks, Elaine, and I couldn't agree more. Um, I I prefer to meet you know have at least a monthly meeting on the books, uh, but I'm always available. Lauren knows she can text, she can uh, she can message me on Teams, she can email me at any time, and and you know we're talking throughout throughout the throughout the season, uh, different strategies at different points of the RFP season. So uh, next question looks like we've got one more that just came in. Uh, when do you expect the 2025 RFP season to kick off? And maybe I, I can jump in and grab that. So. Um, uh, as most of you know, GBTA just took place in Atlanta last week, uh, a little bit earlier than what we've seen in the past. I think it's about three or four weeks earlier than it typically is, uh, wh which is a good thing because we're seeing a lot of programs already start to kick off. So uh, a few before GBTA, some started kicking off uh, while actually while we were at GBTA and this week, several more have kicked off. So um, I think be ready now. Uh, what I'm hearing from the corporate buyers is they want to uh, uh, get this wrapped up as soon as possible. So a lot are saying before the uh, U.S. Thanksgiving holiday so uh fingers crossed that uh that that happens because uh i know that's always a goal to get get things done before the holidays so uh be ready they are kicking off and uh you'll be seeing rfps very very soon um let's see here's another question uh how do we know if a client is accepting unsolicited bids and I think I can I can take that one. Uh, so that that's a very good question. Uh, as mentioned uh, during the webinar, um, you know we did find that most corporates will review unsolicited bids. Uh, just the manner of how they how they review is is a little bit different. Uh, 
depending on the client and what their goals are. Typically, they'll uh, they'll include in their RFP packet. They'll include they'll include a note if they're accepting unsolicited bids. Uh, sometimes you have to reach out to the client directly to receive the form, and sometimes it's included within those bid packets. So uh, taking a look within Cvent uh, and and seeing if it's in the bid packet, or reaching out to your national account manager uh, and asking would be would be the best way to uh, to find out if that client is accepting unsolicited bids. And I think that's it for now. Is there any other questions? If so, please feel free to, to type them in the chat. Um, you can also afterwards follow up. Um, we got one more question. Um, can you give a guideline on ADR increases to which clients will accept? Uh, so great question. And, you know, that really, I know maybe I can, I'll, I'll jump in and take this one. It really depends. It's it's by market, right? So some markets uh, we see are increasing at a higher rate than others. Uh, this year at GBTA, they typically put out, um, in the past, we've seen a full year uh, forecast uh, for the future. Uh, this year, uh, because it was a little bit earlier, they did not do that. So um, I, I would take a close look at, um, you know, whatever's happening as far as inflation within the market, um, because that that's really what the corporates are going to be looking at. So they're going to, they're going to take a look, see what the inflation is. And if it's higher than, than market, um, I, I don't think they'll, you know, they're going to, they're going to push back or not accept. And so this one, Elaine, I don't know this one, here's another one came in. It said, since this is uh, the first time, our hotels do an RFP. Do we have to make sure our hotel PMS has interface with GDS? Yes. So if they're, so it, everything has to interface. So PMS needs to interface with the CRS and CRS then interfaces with the GDS. So um, yes. And, and one thing to, to watch out for as well is when you come to load your rates, make sure that those rates are onward mapped to PMS and to, if you're working with a channel manager, make sure that they're onward mapped to the channel manager as well. And, you know, always check with the corporation that they can view and book your rates because that's where it all starts. And then you can start troubleshooting backwards from there. Um, make sure internally that you're working with your revenue department to make sure that those rates are onward mapped um, to the PMS and to the channel manager. Great, thank you, Elaine. And it looks like here's another one. Um, are you able to help us identify local corporates with room nights in our area? And I, I think I can I can take that. So uh, the answer is yes, we absolutely can. Um, there's a couple different ways that we do this. Uh, one, um, and this is before RFPs launch, we take a close look at the proximity reports, which are in Cvent, uh, and we can see kind of what what corporates have offices within certain hotel, uh, you know, near 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 hotel locations. Um, another way we can identify is when when corporate launch their RFP, they tip in the bid packet, they typically include um, volume by market or by city. So we take close a close look at that. So even if we haven't received a request for, you know, a, a hotel looking to work with a certain corporate, if if if, if we as a NAM uh, see that a client does have room nights within, you know, close close proximity to uh, to a hotel uh, or accommodation, you know, we'll reach out and, and let you know and uh, and work with you to try to submit an unsolicited bid. And I'd like to jump in there as well and say, you know, as soon as you see a new company coming into your local office area, sometimes the travel manager may not be aware of that at global level. So feed that back to, you know, your GSO, to your, to whoever you're working with on that's helping you to generate your RFPs because, that can then move very quickly from, you know, an unsolicited bid into a, a, a strong RFP opportunity. And that can happen at any time throughout the year. So always eyes and ears looking at, you know, who's moving into the to the local offices because um, you can actually help um, generate an opportunity there um, into a corporate program. Yeah, that's, and I've that's seen a... this happen from my sorry, Andy, from my nope. perspective, I've seen this happen um, for us a few times, you know, where I've noticed a new company, we've seen some uptick in production, um, and then through, you know, Sendine and, and through our accessibility on the GDS and access to the travel manager and their team, their TMC, if you will, 
um, we've then been able to load rates properly for them because like they said, they're not the boots on the ground. So um, it's certainly a good a good tactic, good strategy. Right. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more. And again, I think it really showcases the partnership uh, between uh, the properties and, and the corporates. So. And I think when you're looking at your your channel analysis, make sure that you're checking that, you know, anytime that you have a special flash sale or anything going on on the OTA side, make sure that that's in parity with what you have in the GDS, because a lot of the time the corporates are seeing more content coming into their corporate booking tools now. So not just GDS content, but third party content as well. And sometimes when they're, you know, making the booking, you know, they're not the experts in all of these different rates and all the terms and conditions around them. Um, so sometimes we, we see that, you know, there could be a flash sale that's fed through to a corporate booking tool into Concur, for example, where the traveler then turns up at the property and is looking for, you know, well, my breakfast is normally included in the rate or, you know, some of some of these things that they normally have when they book their their corporate rate, but what they've done is book the lowest rate available that they could see within their booking tool. And, you know, this it means that, you know, they haven't come in on the on the correct rate that they normally would. So check to make sure that you haven't got any leakage there in terms of um, room nights that have shifted um, for a corporation into other channels. So um, when you're looking at an analyzing, you know, potential new corporates as well that are using the property for the first time always check and see you know through all the different channels is there any new companies that are that are starting to use you and that can trigger them to see okay where are they based where's that company based is it is it a new office that's local to the property and you know is there potential there to turn that into a new corporate contract for longer term business Okay, thank you, Land. It looks like that is it for questions for now. Excellent. Okay. Um, so we will be sharing the deck out with everyone. And um, we will share, you know, our white paper as well. And then um, any other questions that come in, we will um, ensure that, you know, we answer those as well. But um, I'd just like to thank thank Lauren specifically for for joining today and um, on the session. And also thank you everyone who's joined the webinar today. Um, we truly appreciate it and hope that you took away some, some good tips there um, for the RFP season and good luck for that. Um, we know that it's, you know, it's highly competitive for all this corporate business and um, we really want to help you as much as we can in order to um, generate um, strong demand, um, especially from the, the GDS channel. So thank you, everyone, and um, look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you. Good luck with our pre-season, everyone.